Okay, let's go ahead and get started on painting our image. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open our layers panel, create a new layer. Let's start with our trees. So I'm gonna name the layer trees. And I'm gonna go back to my brush panel and I'm gonna find a brush to get started with. So I'm gonna click on my brush tip shape. And I think what I might choose first is this 60 and it's a chalk style. And then I'm gonna click on shape dynamics and I want to adjust it just a little bit. So I'm gonna move up my size jitter just to make it a little more jagged on the edges. And I can also adjust the angle a little bit. So when I'm drawing with this, I get a little bit of texture to my painting when I'm doing my trees because of all those leaves and everything. So I've adjusted my size jitter up to 20% and my angle jitter to 20%. And this is in the shape dynamics. I'm gonna collapse that down. I'm gonna change my color to a dark green. And now, remember I'm on a new layer. I've named it trees. I'm just gonna paint over my trees. Now remember, we can still resize our brush with our keyboard and make it larger and make it smaller as we're working. As I get over into this other section on the far right, I'm obviously gonna wanna make it smaller. And we can paint in different directions. We can click and drag and for a little while here, we can pretend we're actually artists. And I'll be the first to admit, I am no artist. But what's again, what's fun about Photoshop is it can make you actually seem like you are one. Okay, I'm gonna make a little bit smaller brush. Smaller brush, left square bracket. And I'm gonna come down here into the end and finish out my land mass with my trees and such. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Now, you know, you can embellish this as much as you want. I could go back in with another color. I could try a different brush to try and add some more layers to my colors, just as a real artist probably would. Let me go ahead and make another new layer and let's work on the sun. So I'm gonna name this sun. And with the sun, I'm gonna create the sun in the sky and I'm also gonna work on my reflection. So let's get our brush panel open again. I find it easier to work in the brush panel when locating the brush that you wanna work with since you do get to see what you're selecting and you get to play with it a little bit before you commit to it. So I'm gonna actually look for something that looks round and I guess we're gonna to go towards the bottom here. And let's start with maybe this number 20 here. And we'll just keep that one and see what happens. And I'm gonna change my color to maybe like a goldish yellow something that would look good in the sky. And I'm gonna resize my brush for my sun, and I'm just gonna keep clicking it. And as I keep clicking it, it's gonna work on top of itself to create my sun. Now let me hide my background so we can see what's happening here. If I click this again, and I just keep clicking on top of it, it keeps adding more depth to my sun. Kind of like with a real paintbrush, if you kept clicking on it, or stippling with your brush or stamping with your brush, more paint would come off of it and it would give you more depth in your picture. Okay, let me turn my background back on and I'm just gonna drag this down on my water to create my reflection as well. Let's go ahead and hide the background again to see how we're doing. That's actually looking pretty good. And now I'm going to make another layer and let's work on our water. And remember, we may have to reorder our layers as we're working too. Now let's go back to our brush panel and let's see what kind of brush we can find that might give us the ability to make some of those waves. And remember, we can always go back in and we can make modifications. Oh, that number 75 there looks kind of interesting. Let's click on the 75. It's called Sample Tip. And let's go into our different dynamics here and see what kind of adjustments we can make. Here's the texture and it's just using the textures that are available by default. And let me come down here and let's look under our gear icon to see if we have any other patterns that we can maybe call up. Let's go ahead and go into Artist Services and see what we get. I'm gonna click Append to go ahead and add onto my list. And I think I like this one down here. Wax crayon on charcoal paper. I'm gonna see what this does. So I'm gonna collapse my panel and I wanna get a new color. Maybe I'm gonna do a little bit more shady of blues. 
than what we actually see in the original picture. Again, we're just using this picture as a guide to get us started. And I'm just going to click and drag and create my water. And I'm trying to make what looks like maybe some shapes on my brushes that would follow the ripples in the water. And obviously you can change things up, move things around. And remember, every time we click on the same color again, it's going to add to the color beneath it. But we can start with this one, and then perhaps I want to go back in, and I can go over my sun, because I can reorder my layers later. But I can go back in with another color. I can even change my brush and get another style of brush. So let's go back in. Let's get another color. Maybe I want to go a little deeper on that blue, and I can continue to add. And remember, I can vary my brush sizes, which will also add to your dynamics of your image, make it a little bit more interesting instead of them all being the same size. And here, I'm just clicking and dragging. And I just went up into my landscape, but again, I can reorder this so that it goes behind my trees. Let me go back up and get a light color again. Change my brush. And I think I actually like that. And I'm going to bring my water layer down below my trees. And let me hide my background so I can see how we're doing. And I can now see my reflection of my sun. And now we need to work on our sky. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm on the water layer here that I've reordered on my stacking order. Remember our stacking order in our layers panel. Whatever's on top is in front. Whatever's on the bottom is in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer above the water layer. I'm going to name that sky. And I think I'm going to kind of go with this motif. I'm going to go with some orangey colors because it's either sunrise or sunset and that looks a little nicer for that time of day and it'll kind of explain the location of our sun in relation to our trees. Let's go ahead and get our brush panel open again and go back with the brush tip shape and see if we have any other brushes here that we might want to use for our sky. Now remember we can come over here on our options panel and we can go to our gear icon and we can actually open up additional brush libraries. So let's go ahead and see what we've got down here. Let's try the wet media brushes. The last one there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to replace all my brushes with the wet media brushes so they're easier to locate. So here they are now in my brush panel. And let's go ahead and get number 17. Let's start with that. It's one of the chalk ones. We've got dry brush. We've got this one that looks kind of large, the rough dry brush. Ooh, this one looks interesting. Number 63, watercolor loaded wet flat tip. Let's see what that one does. And you'll notice here, I can also modify the direction of my tip. I can change the shape of my tip of my brush. Let's go ahead and make it wider. And I'm going to angle it down. Okay, let me collapse my brush panel. And again, I want to work with those colors that are in the actual sky. So let me go ahead and use my color picker and maybe make this a little bit more orangey. There we go. Again, I'm working on my sky layer, and I'm just going to click, and I'm going to drag. And this is kind of neat, because when I'm working with this one, it's actually, when I release my mouse, it's still painting. So it looks kind of cool when I'm working with it. Let me resize my brush, and I'm just going to do a lot of the background here, and then I'm going to come back and layer some other colors. Now remember, I'm behind my trees, but they're going to work together. Okay, now let me get another color. I'm going to get a smaller brush, and I'm going to add to my background. Okay, let me maybe go up a little bit here on the spectrum and try to bring in some yellows, yellowish oranges. And here we go. That actually looks kind of neat. 
Okay, I'm gonna get my move tool just to turn off my brush. And I'm gonna bring my layers panel up a little taller here by resizing it. And I'm gonna turn off my background layer. Now we can see we do see some transparent areas. So we could make a layer at the bottom of our stacking order. And we could just fill that with a color or a texture. A lot of times when artists are painting on canvas, sometimes they paint the entire canvas one color and then they work off of it instead of working off of that white canvas. So let's go ahead and maybe get a color. I'm gonna get one of those shades of green that I worked with earlier and maybe go a little lighter. And let's see what this does. I'm gonna get my paint bucket and I'm just gonna spill it on that layer, on my new layer one. And let me rename this one background. Okay, I kind of think that looks pretty neat. We're gonna come back and we're gonna finish this up.